The iRacing Pro Invitational Series is coming back in a big, big way. And how many laps are we doing around Bristol dirt? Ooh. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. We're talking about paint schemes. We're talking about Bristol dirt race concerns, driver announcements, driver debut announcements, and of course, the iRacing Pro Invitational. That's the big story here today. The news is not slowing down, so if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Out of the Groove is getting busy over the next few weeks, and then the season starts, and we all know that means business. We're gonna talk about everything today, but first, I have to thank our first sponsor of the year, Swan Security System is back this year as a major supporter of Out of the Groove. If you're looking for the perfect wired security system that will drive intruders away, look no further than the Swan Enforcer security system. The Enforcer features 4K cameras, flashing lights and sirens. You get live updates on your smartphone, free local and cloud video recording. It's the complete package. And get ready because Swan has stepped up in a big way this year as supporters of Out of the Groove. Look forward to more content and more contests. We'll be giving away some Swan Enforcer Enforcer security systems this year, so stay tuned for a whole lot more. A big thank you to Swan Security Systems for supporting Out of the Groove and supporting racing. It's tough to decide where to start this video. Let's start with some driver announcements. Yesterday, Brian Vargas announced that he will race full-time for JD Motorsports in the Xfinity Series this year. He'll be in the sixth car. There were no sponsors mentioned in the press release, but I assume TikTok will at least be somewhat involved. Vargas made nine starts last year for JD Motorsports. His best finish was eighth at Texas. He got his first career top 10. He'll be eligible to run for the Xfinity Series Rookie of the Year Award. Ryan Vargas is awesome. He's a friend of the channel. He's a young driver, but he works really, really hard. You've probably seen him at the track working as a pit crew member some weeks when he's not able to get behind the wheel. Dude works really, really hard. He's been grinding for years now. I'm really excited to see him get this opportunity. I hope he makes the most of it. JD Motorsports is going to be a fun team to watch next year. They've already announced Landon Castles racing full-time. We know Jeffrey Earnhardt. Ryan Vargas as well. That's going to be a fun team. A lot of great stories to watch over there at JD Motorsports. Sports. Good luck, Ryan Vargas. Wishing the best for you, man. Today, Joe Gibbs Racing confirmed that Ty Gibbs will make his Xfinity Series debut in just a few weeks. They also announced that Ty Gibbs will run the full Arkham Menard Series schedule this year. He'll run all the races. He'll contend for the championship. Now that he's 18 years old, he is eligible to run at all of the tracks, even the big ones. He will make his Xfinity Series debut February 20th at the Daytona Road Course. He'll be driving the number 54 Toyota Supra for Joe Gibbs Racing, a car that is going to see a revolving door of drivers. They're calling it the star car because it's going to have Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, even Martin Truex Jr. apparently behind the wheel for a number of races this year, along with Ty Gibbs and maybe others. Really excited to see Ty Gibbs jump into the Xfinity Series. I really think Ty Gibbs is great. A lot of people have asked me, what are some of these young guys in ARCA or ARCA East and West that you're looking forward to? I always say Ty Gibbs. I know people want to look past Ty Gibbs because his last name is Gibbs. He's the grandson of Joe Gibbs, so people think he's getting special treatment. He's just another daddy's boy. I mean, Ty Gibbs ran 16 ARCA races last Last year and he won six of them <laughs> most of them at 17 years old so this kid is really really good sure he may be a Gibbs he's gonna be in great equipment but he's also very very talented and I think he's learning a lot very quickly he seems very emotionally mature I feel like I've even just in one year seen him grow a whole whole lot so I'm really looking forward to what Ty Gibbs can do this year and in the future he's a guy that I think could win races in top NASCAR series one day fairly soon. Even though he missed four ARCA races last year because he wasn't old enough, he still finished fifth in the points. Now, part of that is ARCA's not super competitive, but another part of that is he ran really well in the races he was allowed to race last year. So look out for Ty Gibbs. I don't know what to expect from his Xfinity Series schedule this year. It's going to be part-time. We know right now he's only going to start the Daytona Road Course. Other potential dates are TBD at this point. We'll see how it goes, but I am looking forward to seeing Ty Gibbs on track on bigger and bigger stages this year and in the coming year. So good luck, Ty Gibbs. Watch out for him, guys. He's not just a recognizable name. I think he's going to become a very recognizable talent here very, very soon. Let's talk paint schemes real quick. Yesterday, I saw this photo floating around. It originated from NASCAR Reddit, a photo of Brad Keselowski in a Keystone light fire suit with a keystone light paint scheme behind him. 
put up at, I guess, like a grocery store or a gas station or something like that on display, seeming to suggest that Keystone Light will be on the two car for at least one race this year. I have to say, well, first, let's just talk about the paint scheme. The paint scheme, it looks okay. It kind of looks flat in this photo, just this poster, but I kind of have to imagine how it will look on a real racetrack. I like the blue. This means the blue deuce is back at long last. I like the mountain range on the side. It looks okay. It looks pretty good. I, not a bad paint scheme at all, but now let's talk about what this means because, you know, I did like one quick Google search. The brand Keystone Light is owned by the same company that owns the Miller brand. So of course this has to do with that Miller Light deal. The Miller Light deal that we all thought was kind of on the way out. I mean, Miller Light only sponsored one race last year as the primary. It was the Coke 600 and Brad did win that race. But Miller Light in recent years has slowly declined their involvement in the NASCAR Cup Series. Could this mean that maybe their other brand is making a resurgence? Maybe they weren't getting the return they liked on the Miller brand, but maybe they're thinking the Keystone Light brand will be, will be different. I don't know. I'll be shocked if we see this car on track for more than one or two races this year, but still it's good to know that the Miller brand, you know, that whole company is still at least somewhat involved with Team Penske. Good looking paint scheme, was surprised to see it. Let me know what you think of that paint scheme down in the comments below. Another interesting paint scheme I saw this morning, actually. Austin Sindrick, of course, is gonna try to run the Daytona 500. He'll attempt to qualify in the 33 Penske car. The 33 in a Penske-style font is gonna take some getting used to, but uh, today he revealed his sponsor and his paint scheme that he'll run in that race. Verizon is back in NASCAR. It's been a while. Verizon, of course, is a well-known Penske IndyCar supporter, so not shocking to have them in their portfolio, but we haven't seen Penske bring out the Verizon colors into the NASCAR Cup Series or any NASCAR Series for that matter in a number of years so this is pretty cool to see another huge brand getting involved with a young driver getting involved with a very competitive team in the sports biggest race that has to feel good NASCAR has got to be patting themselves on the back a little bit after this announcement paint scheme looks good it's simple big 5g on the hood it's clear what they're promoting <laughs> I like it again I want to see Austin Sendrick make it into the Daytona 500 because I believe he'll be competitive and he'll have a shot at winning the race and I want to see some fun underdogs make things interesting at the end of that race so I'm wishing Austin Austin Cindric, the best, great looking paint scheme. Great to have Verizon back in the NASCAR Cup Series. Another paint scheme. Let me know what you guys think of that scheme down in the comments as well. I think it's, I mean, simple, but it's solid. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We are flying through stories right now. We'll talk about the iRacing Pro Invitational's return here in just a minute. But first, yesterday, all of the stage and race lengths for all Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and Truck Series races this year were revealed, with a few exceptions. All of the Circuit of the Americas races have not yet had their race distances decided, so we don't know how many laps that race will be. Same goes for the Texas All-Star race. They did not announce a distance or stage length or anything for that race either, but all the other races, Trucks, Xfinity Cup, we have lengths, and they're not a whole lot of surprises. I thought it was interesting that the newly added second Atlanta race, the late summer Atlanta date, will only be 400 miles as opposed to the 500 mile race in the spring. Also, I mean, we knew it was called the Ally 400, but the Nashville Super Speedway Cup Series race will be 300 laps. So that, yes, roughly equals 400 miles. The track is about one and a third miles long. The line on this chart that had everyone talking, though, is the Bristol Dirt Race Link. So the trucks and the Cup Series will both race at Bristol with dirt on its surface in March. The Camping World Truck Series race will be 150 laps, and then the NASCAR Cup Series race will be 250 laps. 250 laps around a high banked half mile dirt track. I don't know a whole lot about dirt racing, but even I know there's a risk involved with that. And I saw a lot of comments from people very familiar with dirt racing and what goes into preparing a dirt track for different series. I saw a lot of those people very concerned on social media yesterday about this race length, how NASCAR is gonna manage that entire weekend because you're talking at least 400 laps being put on that surface over the course of two days and of course a couple weeks earlier there's the Bristol Dirt Nationals where a bunch of different cars are going to turn laps and race around that surface help maybe pack the dirt in a little bit maybe that's going to be a good thing but that track surface is going to see a lot of wear during that NASCAR weekend these are heavy cars running a lot of laps and a lot of cars you know there's not just like 10 12 cars on track there's going to be like 40. I saw a lot of people speculating that NASCAR may take some time to red flag the race in between stages for a short period of time to maybe work on the track. I don't know if that's something that NASCAR is considering. Again, I watched some dirt racing, but really have only started to show interest in it the last couple of years. I mean, I watched the Chili Bowl Nationals main event earlier, you know, last weekend, and all I remember is it took them more than two hours to prepare an indoor track, a quarter mile flat indoor track in between the B main and the feature event. Two plus hours of track prep. They are very particular in dirt racing about the racing surface and how it looks because a little inconsistency here or there can completely derail the entire race race. You worry about the track being too rubbered in, potentially getting to be too slick. You also worry about, you know, the track not being packed in enough and creates like a dust storm. I mean, there's a lot of things that can 
go wrong with a race like this, which is another reason why I'm a little concerned about the Bristol dirt race, just broadly speaking. I know they've put dirt on Bristol before, but it's been, you know, more than 20 years now, so it's not something they do frequently, not something they have done ever since they changed the track to progressive banking like 10, 12 years ago. So I am a bit concerned. We already know they're removing the safer barriers for this race, which is something that they probably never thought they'd be doing. Now they're going to turn 40 heavy cars loose for 250 laps. I just... I still worry there's going to be some unforeseen issue that arises that weekend and is going to turn this race into a bit of a mess. I'm not really, honestly, I'm not that worried about the drivers at this point. I mean, we saw the truck series when they went to Eldora for the first time. The drivers figured it out pretty quick and put on a, a good show. I'm sure the NASCAR Cup Series drivers will handle themselves fairly well at Bristol. You know, there'll certainly be some drivers way better than others. Some guys may be way off the pace that we're not used to seeing be way off the pace, but I don't think the drivers will be largely responsible for a mess if, in fact, this race becomes a mess. I'm at this point more worried about the track itself, the preparation being put into it. I'm worried that there's going to be something about the track that derails this whole event week of, weekend of, day of. I, I just, I really don't know. I don't know enough about dirt racing, so maybe I'm really worried for no reason. Maybe these are all professionals and I should just sit back and relax and enjoy the show. But uh, this all goes back to the fact that I love normal Bristol and the fact that they took a normal Bristol ra race and turned it into this. I really expect this to be good. This better be great because that spring Bristol race, normal Bristol race is usually fantastic. I don't care if nobody shows up. It's a fantastic race. I really hope this Bristol one works out. But anyway, I've expressed enough of my concerns about that in recent weeks. I'm just going to sit back, zip my lip, and hope for the best. These are professionals. I'll let them do professional things, hopefully. Anyway, that's all I want to talk about with Bristol Dirt. Let's talk about iRacing. That was the big breaking news story today. It's been rumored for weeks at this point, but today it's official, and it's official in a big way. NASCAR announced today that the iRacing Pro Invitational is returning in 2021. 10 races. 10. How many did we have last year? Like five, six, something like that. 10 will be on the schedule this year. Five will be aired on Fox or FS1. The other five will be aired on either NBC Sports or USA Network. I guess that's TBD. But yes, the iRacing Pro Invitational is back. So you will see top real world NASCAR stars racing in the virtual world on national television with, I assume, Mike Joy, Jeff Gordon, Clint Boyer, the normal TV broadcast booth calling the action, much like we saw during the shutdown uh, last spring. It'll likely look very, very similar. Now today, NASCAR and FS1 only announced the day in times of the first five races. The second five, which will be on the NBC family of networks, have not yet had dates or tracks decided. So those are still TBD. But the first five were revealed. Let's look at the schedule. The first iRacing event will be Wednesday, March 24th at, oh my, I didn't even see, I didn't even look this close. At Bristol Dirt, you're going to put guys who already aren't super experienced with iRacing on on Bristol dirt to start. Oh no, I didn't even, I didn't see that before I turned on the camera. That is fraught with peril. Now, I'm again, I'm worried about Bristol dirt again. I cannot escape my fears. Yeah, that's that's going to be a mess. Okay, I'm just going to say right now, that race is going to suck. The the asphalt Bristol race that they put on last year sucked. So, I do not have any faith that this Bristol dirt race in the i racing world is going to be any good. That's going to suck. So, let's just skip that one. Let's look at the second one. A couple weeks later, they'll race at Talladega. That should be fun. Then Darlington, all right. Circuit of the Americas. They'll race at Circuit of the Americas. That's fantastic. And then the final race on FS1 is still TBD. June 2nd is what they're looking at. You'll notice all of these will be Wednesday night races. How about that? So still bringing back midweek races. All that tells me is that ratings for these are going to suck. <laughs> hey, during the shutdown last year when they ran these, you know, Sunday afternoon, they were getting a million views on average. That's pretty freaking crazy. I mean, that's like Xfinity series. Number. That's better than Xfinity series numbers in a lot of ways. So that was pretty crazy. They're going to be lucky to get half that, I think, this year. Part of it is now that real sports are back. The charm of iRacing, I think, is not quite what it was, but also running it on Wednesday night as a opposed to Sunday afternoon. No, they, I, I don't have a feeling these are going to bring in quite the fantastic numbers that the original Pro Invitational did, but hey, kudos to them. At least they're trying midweek racing out. That's something fans have been asked for. This is kind of bridging that gap. So I'm all for trying it. I like it a lot. Um, as for the schedule, of course, they don't know what that fifth race will be, but uh, I think Talladega, Darlington, and Circuit of the Americas will be great. I like that they're doing Circuit of the Americas right before the actual Circuit of the Americas weekend. will help build up hype for that historic weekend. Uh, I think Bristol Dirt is going to be fraught with peril. That will maybe be one to skip. It's a shame that's the first one. You shouldn't have started with that one, guys. No. Nuh uh. I know that a lot of Cup Series guys have really bought into iRacing in the last year, and not just for the Pro Invitational, a lot of Cup Series drivers are racing it in their spare time, so they've probably gotten a lot more practice on the sim, they'll probably be largely better than they were in the spring of last year, but I, I still don't have faith in these guys running around Bristol Dirt on national TV, that's a, bad, that's a bad one to start with, what were they thinking? Hey, it's cool at least that they can race Bristol Dirt in the sim, I mean that's, again, this the whole purpose of this, or at least one of the big purposes of this is to showcase the technology itself, and that's pretty awesome that you could do that in iRacing. 
The other big thing is this is supposed to showcase driver personalities and it thrived at doing that last year. I hope they do a great job of it again this year. I hope they're able to still have fun in the broadcast booth. Other drivers play along and have fun with it as well. I hope it still is a lighthearted thing. I'm worried it won't be just because it's going to be taking place during the real NASCAR season. It might feel more like a business. So we'll see how drivers react to now having to work on a night off more or less we'll see how that goes i love that they're bringing the iRacing pro invitational back i do think the fact that they've committed to 10 races and you know they're doing them every couple of weeks it looks like until at least june we know the nbc portion will take over after that so the idea is that they'll be doing these races into you know probably september october maybe they'll try to wrap them up before the playoffs start i don't know but the fact that they're going to be doing these late into the season and we already know practice and qualifying in the real world are largely canceled for the year i think there's going to be eight races that have practice this season most of them being at tracks that are new to the schedule. So I worry there are going to be fans that grow to resent the iRacing Pro Invitational as we get later in the year, as fingers crossed, hopefully a lot more parts of the country begin to open up. Life maybe goes somewhat back to normal, you know, from a couple of years ago. We might start to see full stands again at some point this season. And if we still see full stands, but no practice and no qualifying, but we're still doing this eye racing thing, there's going to be some fans that are a little put off by that. Because remember, that's a large reason why they're doing this Pro Invitational is to appease the networks. Fox and NBC are a little upset that they can't show qualifying and practice. Those were ratings wins for them in the past. They can't show those. They can't sell ads for those. So to make up for that, NASCAR said, we'll give you some eye racing to show on TV. And NBC and Fox are eating that stuff up. But fans, I'm worried, will not eat that stuff up, especially, especially once we get later in the season. And Hopefully fans are able to return to the racetrack in large numbers again. It's just people will begin to resent it, I think. I, th I feel like I will, quite honestly. And I like iRacing a lot, but even I might get a little tired of it by the end of the year. I'll be, I'm already itching for practice and qualifying to come back by July that itch will only become harder and harder to scratch, I'm afraid. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Are you excited for the return of the Pro Invitational? Let me know what you think. That's all I've got to talk about in today's episode, a huge episode of Out of the Groove here on a Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel. We talk NASCAR almost every single day. There's just that much to cover. So make sure you're subscribed once again so you do not miss a thing. A big thank you, as always, to my amazing Patreon supporters. I could not do this show without your tremendous support. Again, I have to thank our sponsor, Swan Security Systems. They're huge partners of Out of the Groove this year. Can't wait to have them involved in all that we're doing. Stay tuned for a whole lot more content coming from Swan and coming from Out of the Groove in the coming weeks and months. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.